Welcome to the IAQ UK video, providing an insight into the IAQ Awareness Certificate. My name is Dr Julie Riggs and I will be exploring the content of the certificate with you and the rationale behind why IAQ UK are offering this programme. Before I begin, I'd ask that you take a moment to stop and consider the impact on the air you are breathing. What are you breathing? It's a good question to ask ourselves. Consider the basics of your indoor air environment and the quality of the air you breathe. If you replace the contents of a five gallon bottle that sits aloft a water cooler, substituting water with air, you will breathe an equivalent of 600 bottles every day, taking approximately 20,000 breaths. It is often an unconscious action and you probably do not consider the quality of the air that travels along dusty ventilation ductings or exhaled by adjoining occupants, which passes through our noses and mouth and into our lungs. Individually and collectively, we take the air we breathe for granted, and yet every breath is vital for sustaining our lives, supplying our blood with oxygen and removing metabolic waste. The air consists of 21% of oxygen, with 78% nitrogen, and the remaining 1% is a small amount of argon, carbon dioxide and other gases and water vapour. The composition of inhaled air remains relatively constant. Although Earth is a leaky vessel with small quantities of the atmosphere escaping into space every year, the loss rate is currently tiny, only about 3 kilograms of hydrogen and 50 grams of helium per second. With the knowledge that oxygen is too heavy to leave the atmosphere, we do not need to worry about wearing oxygen packs yet. Within the air, dust, chemical components and biological agents will be present. These variables can affect our health, both physically and psychologically. They can affect our perception of our environment, determining whether our surroundings are conducive and comfortable. As most individuals spend 80 to 90% of their time indoors, they are therefore exposed to the indoor environment to a much greater extent than the outdoors. Research suggests that indoor air pollutants are an important cause of avoiding mobility and mortality in the UK. As you will see from this slide, indoor environments are 10 times more pollutant than outdoors. The US Environmental Protection Agency recognises indoor air quality as one of the top five health hazards. They list 20 toxic compounds that affect cancer and birth defects as 200 to 500 times higher indoors. According to the American Medical Association, 50% of all illnesses are caused or aggravated by polluted indoor air. 36,000 new chemicals are added to the chemical abstraction services every single day. Therefore, there are unknown levels of risks. We do not know the combined effect of chemicals. We often test in silos. We have silo knowledge. If we use the example of building a house, in the 1900s, 50 different types of materials were used. Today, there are over 55,000 materials available. So we have seen many changes in building designs and working practices. We're open plan, people work in smaller spaces, they work from home, we use more technology, we have more chemicals, synthetics within our environment. In the past 20 years of research, a consistent figure of 70% of occupants are dissatisfied with their environment We've also seen an increase of health effects. With hundreds of varied compounds, typical immediate health effects can include eyes, nose and throat irritation, headaches, migraine, nausea, fatigue and the feeling of dizziness. Some immediate effects are usually short term and treatable. Sometimes the treatment is simply eliminating the person's exposure to the source of the pollution, if it can be identified. Reaction to indoor air pollutants can be individually determined by factors such as gender, age, activity within exposed area, an individual sensitivity, repetitive exposures and or pre-existing conditions. Other health effects may show up years after exposure has occurred or only after long or repeated periods of exposure. These effects can include respiratory diseases, heart disorder and cancer and can be severely debilitating or fatal. Mental health conditions, reduction in productivity and comfort have also been linked to changes in air quality. So are we doing enough? The answer is no. There is a gap between the needs of our occupants and the role of influencing change in accessing resources. 
Solutions to indoor air problems are not solely achieved by the technical knowledge, but also by the management of social interaction and cooperation with our occupants. As an example, if you take a known hazard such as smoking, Cancer Research UK claim that 3% of lung cancer cases in the UK are caused by air pollution, compared with smoking that causes up to 90%. This means that smoking causes nearly 30 times more lung cancer cases than air pollution. And although smoking has been addressed within public spaces, Cancer Research UK indicate that 40% of children are still exposed to secondhand smoke. This suggests that although the government have legislation against public spaces, they have had limited impact on society's personal actions and behaviours. This creates an interesting perception that although we know the dangers of smoking, and that the government have invested in this area to reducing smoking activities, people still choose to smoke. Thus publicising a hazard to people does not necessarily make them change a habit. This is further complicated when we take a pollutant that is pleasant, such as perfume. Perfume has similar chemical components as cigarettes. The perception of a risk by an occupant can also affect their comfort and productivity. When an occupant is unable to control local temperature by opening windows or altering the thermostat, they will perceive air quality as poor. We know that 73% of facility managers have admitted to installing fake thermostats to rectify this problem. Therefore, risk is complicated. We will discuss this further during the IAQ Awareness Certificate. The Indoor Air Quality Awareness Certificate is a comprehensive training program aimed at practitioners to assist with a dynamic understanding of indoor air quality and the effects of health, comfort and productivity. Managing indoor air quality is challenging because it crosses many disciplinary boundaries including architecture, building science, occupational health and human behaviour and covers many types of variables relating to building including their layout and technology the organisations which occupy them, the management styles and the people themselves. The course will provide the participants with practical guidance on how to achieve effective air quality in the workplace for optimum working conditions. The Indoor Air Quality Awareness Certificate will cover topics such as the scope and nature of indoor air quality, consequences of poor IAQ, ventilation, fundamental components of indoor air quality, types of pollutants, investigating indoor air quality concerns and proactive indoor air quality management. The Indoor Air Quality Awareness Certificate is a dynamic course with questions and answering, brainstorming, quizzes and discussions, offering UK's best practice and guidance, demonstrating a linkage between IAQ and productivity and performance, providing practical advice for non-technical managers supplemented with current research for further reading. It is the only UK comprehensive training programme for IAQ with modern theories and practical applications and is available via classroom and online learning. The training is offered by IAQ UK which is a dedicated independent organisation with the aim of raising the agenda of indoor air quality within the home and workplace by working with the various agents and organisations in promoting indoor air quality and ensuring that information is accessible to enable individuals to make a choice about their environment. To find out more, contact IAQ UK via the website or drop them an email at admin at iaquk.org.uk. Thank you.